There have been dozens of volcanic eruptions this year, the more notable ones taking place recently on Spain's La Palma Island and on the Indonesian island of Java. Thousands of homes have been destroyed, while one death has been linked to the Cumbre Vieja eruption, and more than 40 fatalities have resulted from the eruption of Mount Semeru. To give us more insight into this deadly activity is volcanologist Professor Heather Hanley, who joins us now from Sydney, Australia. Thanks for speaking with us today, Professor. Thanks for having me. All right, so there seems to be more volcanic activity this year compared to previous ones, but are we actually seeing more eruptions? And if so, what could be the cause? So what we're actually seeing is is normal activity. So at any one time, you know, we have um, tens of volcanoes that are active around the planet. And so, but what we're seeing is, you know, volcanoes that are impacting people. And I think that's why, it's, you know, we're, we're hearing about these events more at the moment. All right. So a question that has come up, we're wondering, does climate change play a role in volcanic activity? So climate, ro- climate change can play a role in volcanic activity. So at Sumeru, as we've seen on Saturday, they believe that there was a, a strong storm or rainfall event that has caused part of the top of the volcano, this kind of plug or this dome of solid lava to collapse and to trigger the eruption there. Um, What we've seen in the 2018 eruption of Kilauea is that they believe that that was, um, that the magma or molten rock made it to the surface where it did in this new location because the ground was saturated and and the water had seeped in from some unusually heavy rain events. And we also know that in the past, so looking at past records of the rocks and and understanding what's happened with uh, climate change and ice cover, in Iceland, they believe that when the ice sheets have melted, you know, you you think you've got this ice sheet on top of the volcanoes, when that's melted, what that's done is kind of released also some of the pressure on those volcanic systems and created more melting underground and more frequent eruptions. So it's a lot of, there's still a lot we don't understand and a lot more research that needs to be done. But there does appear to be a link between climate and, and volcanic eruptions. Interesting. OK, and now we know Cumbre Vieja and Mount Semeru, they've both made international headlines. They're both active right now. But that's really where most of the similarities end. So what exactly makes them so different? Yeah, so these two volcanoes are in very different what we call tectonic systems. So that means locations on the world so that they're upper part of the Earth. So that they're the card part, the crust and a bit below that, the upper mantle these tectonic plates that move around, where we get volcanoes that form where these plates collide, such as around the Ring of Fire and places like in Indonesia, what we get there is a lot more gas-rich magma or molten rock, and it's usually more sticky. And so that's what leads to more explosive eruptions. Whereas at places like Cumbre Vieja and say the Hawaii, where there the, the lava ends up being more runny, the magma is not as sticky, then we often, and, it, and it's not got as much gas in the magma itself in those settings that come in the middle of tectonic plates. We often see these more, what we call effusive. So this means just more oozing gentle lava flows in those situations. Obviously there's some variation amongst them and you can get lava flows um, in the more explosive settings. And sometimes, you know, you can get the odd explosive eruption in, in the in the intraplate, what we call in the middle of these tectonic plate settings. But there's the, the type of activity we're seeing in Combrivieja versus what we've seen at Semeru is largely a, a result of where they're actually located on the planet and their tectonic setting. Okay, and Professor Hanley, in Indonesia, experts have said that the eruption there had an unusual trigger that made it difficult to predict. So can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, so Semeru is one of the most active volcanoes uh, in Java and in Indonesia. And so there's a lot of background activity normally and what they've been seeing over the last few months is these ash plumes reaching, you know, a few hundred meters above above the crater. But at the crater, there is a, a dome of lava, so a kind of a plug of solid, hard material. And that, in effect, keeps some of the pressure in. And what they think has happened, you know, this is a very unstable, this dome, it usually grows from, you know, like uh, lava pushing from kind of inside to this form, this unstable mound of rock. And if part of that collapses and releases the pressure, then it can trigger an eruption. And what they believe happened on Saturday is that heavy rain and storms had actually made part of that dome very unstable and it had collapsed. And that's what had triggered the eruption. And some people would ask, you know, why do communities live so close to active volcanoes? But what are the odds that it's going to turn into the deadly event that we are seeing right now in Indonesia? I mean, can communities live in harmony with active volcanoes? 
So I think there's, you know, there's always a risk. There's always going to be a risk living near it on, you know, very close to active volcanoes, particularly in, in regions where, you know, you might have a dome situation that can collapse, you know, unexpectedly or is a bit harder, you know, for scientists to kind of understand what's happening underground because this is more of a, a surface a surface thing. And so there's always a risk of people living next to volcanoes. But, you know, these volcanoes also produce very um, fertile soils nearby. So they're, you know, they're good areas for agriculture. And with increasing population on the planet, you know, more and more people are having to live, you know, occupy the space that's, that's available. And so I think it's a case of, you know, obviously trying to improve our, our monitoring techniques and the, the scientific understanding of volcanoes, as well as trying to keep people safe who live, who live nearby. Well, thank you for breaking all of that down for us and giving us more insight into these volcanic eruptions. Really appreciate your time today, Professor.